Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Uh, I am doing a sunset water tutorial today and it is a beginner level. So yes, everybody can do this, I promise you. Uh, I'm gonna just jump right in. Here I am cutting out a sun. <laughs> I mean, it's tiny, it's a little circle, but it's a sun. I'm using uh, painter's tape and it's also what I use to trim the paper to give it a nice clean edge. You don't have to do this. This is really more of a personal preference, uh, but it's, it's, I like it. I, sometimes I'm in the mood for clean lines, sometimes I'm not. And this is one of those instances where I thought it would be pretty to have a clean line and it worked. Um, so originally I was using liquid latex, which is that blue plasticky paint stuff that you can put on paper, watercolor paper and you paint over it and nothing goes through it. And then at the end of your painting, you pull it off and then voila, there's no paint underneath it. Great for things like this, but I don't use mine that much. And that became quite evident when I went to open it up. And by the way, liquid latex that's been it's gone bad. Oh my God, it smells, I don't know what it smells like. I think sulfur is what it smells like. It's awful, awful. And it's just, ugh. and it's just, it turns into this gooey, leaky, it's just disgusting. Um, so needless to say, I didn't use that. And I <laughs> decided to use painter's tape instead and did a little circle for the sun. It was a little bit smaller than I actually wanted. So if you wanna make yours a little bit bigger, go ahead. I am using 18, no, sorry. I'm using a 12 by 16 paper. And so I think if I was using something smaller, like a nine by 12, I think the sun would have been perfect. But if you're using bigger than a nine by 12, I'd probably make it a little bit bigger. Um, you could just paint around it. If you don't have tape, or washi tape works too. I know a lot of people have washi tape. Uh, scotch tape is not good because it will pull up the paper, uh, especially since this is cotton paper. So right now I am mixing the Dr. Peach Martin Gamboge yellow with a little bit of white. And Gamboge is really, it, if you're looking at it on my palette there, it doesn't look as bright as it is, but as soon as you see it on the paper, it's like a really vibrant yellow. And it is one of those paint colors that stains. Now I don't mean stains like stains your shirt, although it probably would. I mean like it stains the paper. So if you are doing like a lift with cloth uh, or you're trying to lift color up, which is a common technique in watercolor, uh, this Gamboge from Dr. Peach Martin as well as his Burnt Umber are the two colors that lift terribly. So if you are, if you have that goal in mind, then don't use those colors as your primary base. Um, but I am starting off with it a little bit more opaque at the top and then I'm just watering it down at the bottom. I did wet my paper first, so this is wet on wet technique and I'm just lightening it a little bit um, at the bottom. I, I'm really just kind of letting my paint thin out on its own. The paintbrush I'm using is my mega paintbrush. It's a Princeton mop brush in a size four. And the reason why I'm using that one is because it's just a big brush. So just use your big brush if you're using a, a larger paper. I, it's just easier. And wet on wet really helps with it to blend together so you don't get those lines. Um, I know a lot of people struggle with that when they're doing sunsets or they're trying to blend colors together. They complain about the lines. So right now I'm gonna add a little bit of burnt umber to the bottom. I created my horizon line about a third, a little above a third of the way down from the paper. Uh, and the sunset's about a third of the way up from the bottom. So just pleasing to the eye, a little bit of feng shui in the arts. But the horizon line, if you don't trust yourself to do it naturally, go ahead and just take a pencil 
and a ruler and draw a line. We are going to be going with over that with a pretty, pretty dark line there in a little bit. So don't worry about the pencil showing through because it won't. We're definitely going to be going dark. So I'm adding the burnt umber to this with a little bit of uh, burnt orange. So I guess it makes sense. It's a sunset. It's burnt. So burnt orange, burnt umber, really lightly washed out. And you can see a little bit on the palette there, but it's burnt orange at the top and burnt umber. And I'm just kind of letting my, my I'm not over mixing it. I'm letting the colors kind of blend together on its own. And I'm really focusing this at the bottom of the horizon line, as well as a little bit to the right. Uh, I'm adding a little bit more orange. And this is really your personal preference. This is a sunset. If you want to add more orange, add more orange if you want to add more red add more red this is going to be a little bit of a brighter warmer sunset for me so it's not like a when i say warmer i mean warm as in heat like you could tell it was a hotter day so it's a little bit more yellow um so it's a brighter brighter sun if you want to do more orange add more orange this is kind of where it's fun being an artist because you get to be creative and come up with like you know what i want my sunset to be a little bit darker so if you want to add orange throughout, then go ahead. But this is just the way I chose to do it. I've done it that way and I love it. Uh, this one I just decided to do a little bit brighter. Happy day probably has something to do with it being 110 degrees here today. And yes, I spent the day by the pool with the margarita, frozen margarita popsicle. I didn't make it myself. The store sells them. All you do is pop it in the freezer, my kind of drink. So I'm just adding the orange and I'm just gonna keep blending it. It's still wet on wet. And if you are in a dry climate like I am, you might have to keep wetting your paper. You can use, a lot of people use a mister, a spray mister, like a spray bottle. I don't like doing that because it does leave spots. I like to have a little bit more control over my paper. So it is really entirely up to you. Um, so I'm just gonna keep adding the orange here and or orange and burnt umber uh, until I get it to the consistency I like and you can do the same thing one of the ways somebody asked me like what do you do do you watch tutorials yourself I haven't watched too many tutorials I know it's not probably something I should be saying since I do them but like I do watch time lapses I have watched tutorials in the past um, I don't think I've ever painted along with one I know some people like to do that especially with the live tutorials that I've done um, with the live, it's a little bit easier for a paint along because if somebody is saying, Hey, you're going too fast. I'll actually slow down. Um, obviously if there's a hundred people and one person is a little bit behind, I don't, I won't necessarily slow down because it's not really fair to the majority, but, uh, that is, that's one of the benefits of a live. So with this, what I recommend if I were you, I would probably watch it through in its entirety first and then paint along just because there might be some surprises for you. I don't know. Uh, and, and I don't mean like weird surprises, just, you know, you're like, oh, I didn't know that's what we were going to do. And I probably would have approached it differently had I known that. So that's why I just recommend watching. You can even do kind of like that quick fast forward video walk through watch through type of thing so I'm again wetting my paper now I'm doing the other half I'm just not going up to the color so I'm leaving some space in between uh, I, I'm basically leaving a blank horizon line and the reason why I'm doing that is because I don't want them to blend together the colors I don't want them to bleed into each other so I wet the bottom half of the paper and I left a little bit of room because I just don't want any kind of bleed through. So what's going to be different here is I'm not looking for a perfect blend on the bottom half because this is going to be water. Uh, the top half I want a perfect blend because it's the sky. With water, unless you have like a mirror lake, which we're not doing today, uh, there are some ripples. This one is it's pretty close to a mirror lake. It's not crazy ripples, but it's not a perfectly flat lake either. So. I do want some natural lines and right now I'm using the uh, I'm using the same color that I was using at the bottom of my sunset just to give it full coverage I'm not too worried about the left hand side there because we're gonna cover that up later uh, I, I am going over a little bit but not too much I don't care about that left side being too covered up I'm really focusing on the the third to the right like that bottom quadrant right there 
and as you can see there's some lines you can see some lines and that's what I'm aiming for and now I'm going to add a little bit of a uh, separate color here I'm going to do burnt umber on its own and I'm blending a little bit but not too much like you guys can see the lines I, I want those natural <clears throat> dark lines in there and uh, just kind of doing it like every inch or so and this is kind of a fun painting to do because it's really just quick brush strokes pretty much all the way through there's only a couple of times where you get a little bit more precise but you can get kind of messy with this one and it turns out good so it's a fun one to do now i'm adding just pure orange in between the burnt umber lines and i'm and i'm doing that because the sun's reflecting a little bit so i'm kind of going for that and if you can see i'm doing like a natural blend and i'm not over blending so just keep going over and over that like that and i'll just keep adding the lines and you do the same thing until you get it to you the consistency you want and if you get to a point where you're like I'm not sure how I feel do I keep going my suggestion is to stop because it's easier to add later than it is to take away and in fact it's pretty impossible to take away especially like I said these colors do stand tend to stain blah 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 so I would add the colors after if you're not sure if you should keep going um, and the idea for me is to keep doing this and then I'm hoping for the top to dry. Not hoping, it will dry. <laughs> it never dries. This isn't an oil painting from the 17th century. It will dry, it is watercolor. Um, as you can see my water, my water, my, what is it called? Paper, good Lord, Tina. My paper is rippling a little bit. It is totally normal for the paper to do that or ripple. Um, it's water on paper. I use watercolor blocks um, and it tends to do that a lot less than if you're using a pad. And that's one of the reasons I use the blocks. Uh, but there's only so much that a block can handle. So it is rippling a little bit. And it does, when it does dry, I will leave it on the block. I won't take it off of the block until it's completely dry and it will dry flat which is really nice um you can use a pad which most people will probably do when they're starting off and you can stretch the paper first to prevent that or once it's done just lie it between books and let it flatten out so now i'm adding brown whatever brown you have to you can see a little bit of the top there and then really really focusing on the right and the reason why i'm doing that is that is going to be mountains on the horizon there. So basically that brown is the mountains reflecting onto the water. And this is one of the reasons why I said it's nice to watch these first because it gives you an idea of what to expect. Because now you're like, why is there just random brown in the water in really random spots? But at the end you'll be like, oh, there's mountains. That makes sense. And I really want it to be dark. I added a little bit of black. And it wasn't just, it wasn't darkening fast enough for me. So I, I went and added the, the black to the brown to darken it faster. Normally you don't really want to add the black because it makes it uh, really muddy. But in this case, it was just a touch, just to give it a little bit of that depth, which uh, it, it ends up making it really beautifully contrasted and gives it that nice richness. And I'll just keep doing that until I get to the, to a point I like and I'll add a little bit of the brown just here and there and one of the things I'm going to be using uh, a little bit later on is bleed proof white from Dr. PH Martin it is it is considered watercolor so it is if you are if you're in a competition uh, it's watercolor only or one medium uh, the bleed proof white is mostly accepted the there's of course some really strict contests out there that they really will not accept bleed proof white but it is watercolor so it's just a thicker more opaque watercolor and it sits on top of the paper it's one of those things where i break the rules with art um i don't 
you're not the idea with the bleed proof white is you're not supposed to be not, not you're supposed to so not meant to be mixed with color i mix it with color all the time i love it uh i don't know why you're not supposed to mix it with color but you're not and i i like it so i'm gonna take a little bit of burnt umber i'm gonna add some clouds now that the top half is dry i'm gonna sit these clouds just a few little little streaks of clouds here and there on top of the sunset at the bottom uh you can go totally crazy with clouds if you want i have definitely done that with some of my pieces but with this one i am not going to be going crazy with clouds i'm just going to take a little bit of the burnt umber again completely opaque i'm not watering it down uh, the color is dry underneath it so it's wet on dry so that it does not blend and the method i'm using is i'm really just using the tip of my paintbrush to do that really thin line and then i flatten out my paintbrush to kind of blend it in to make it look like a cloud and if you want to have a separate scratch paper on the side to see how you do this first by all means go ahead and do that just so you're comfortable with it and I just like this because the way to do the wet on dry, it just makes it look a little bit more three-dimensional. So I have to talk about Amber Heard for a second because, um, I don't know, it's everybody's talking about it, right? So might as well just add one more to the mix. I was up <laughs> early in the morning watching this trial. Now, I didn't like set my alarm I have a six month old who woke me up so it worked out really well and it was just it's really weird because she was she she just was like i'm gonna get up at five o'clock in the morning and i thought that was her new okay we're doing that now we're waking up at five in the morning she literally only did it for the length of the trial uh so it was really weird and now she's back to waking up at seven o'clock so uh she she must know even my six month old was into the trial. So we're watching the trial. I watched every minute of it. I watched all the commentary. I've watched the YouTube channels on it and the behavior panel stuff and the body language experts and the articles and listened to the audio that wasn't presented in the trial. And my goodness, I got obsessed with it. But I'm just curious, like, do you guys think if you watched it I just I feel like there's all these articles coming out after the fact really supporting Amber Heard and I have to wonder like is that a publicity thing like are her publicists making that happen because it's just a really I don't know if it's just the articles I happen to be seeing but it just really seems like all these articles are coming out in favor of her and I'm like did you watch the trial did you look at the evidence so I'm just curious what you guys think because like that's kind of messed up if it is right like you shouldn't me I mean we all know the media is biased even though they're not supposed to be and I'm a writer so I did a lot of work for publications as a freelance writer and actually lost a freelance job because I wouldn't retract a statement I made on a company based on the fact that the publicist had or the publicist a publisher had a relationship with this company i was like nope i'm not retracting my statement and i lost my job um so it is tough to be a objective journalist because there's a lot of pressure on you i get that i get that firsthand but i'm just like man you've got major publications just blatantly saying believe her because she's a woman and I'm like you know as a woman I find that kind of insulting and I know you probably don't want to get political on this channel or any channel you're like I'm watching art I'm doing art I don't want to talk about this but you know I'm into true crime and if you don't want to talk about true crime or crime stuff then this is probably not the art channel for you because it's probably going to come up in every single tutorial I do is just because I love it so much um but anyways i'm just curious what you guys think do you guys think that a publicist has that kind of influence it would be very disappointing if they do but it really seems that way and i don't know maybe i'm being biased myself uh because my father was abused by my mother so i'm definitely biased if you know men out there that are being abused 
uh, I get it. I get it. I watched it firsthand. It is awful. So what I'm doing here is I'm literally taking black and this is wet on dry paint again. And I am, I added the horizon line and it, it looks pretty even the line. Uh, it's okay if it's not because obviously you're adding mountains to it. I did it. It's just, I, I've gotten with a lot of practice, gotten pretty good at drawing lines, pretty straight. Uh, painting lines pretty straight so I'm just using my brush to kind of make a jagged mountain edge and I, I was letting the brush kind of help the natural mountain line uh, mountain line that sounds like mountain lion I am saying mountain line and I just added the natural mountain ridge and the horizon line with the black. It looks like it's a dark brown. Uh, I just, I didn't, it's not completely opaque and there might be a little bit of brown in there, which I'm fine with. I, I, I you know, I think I did, I did mix, there is some brown in there. Um, and it's just because I wanted it to kind of blend in with the, the contrast of the painting. And... There's parts where it is not as opaque, and I'm totally fine with that because it does give this kind of organic, dimensional look to the mountains when you don't do it that way. Um, so there's parts that's darker and parts that's not, and it gives it this really natural depth without having to actually draw ridges into the mountain. And I added, as you can see, uh, that water reflection with the mountain. Uh, I just love that. I think it's really pretty to add that really, I'm really big into contrast with art. And I like things pop. I'm not really into the subtle. So I really like that dark and light, the dichotomy of art. Wow, that sounded really intense. I just love the pop of colors and stuff. So you're gonna see, I do things like that pretty frequently. If that's not your thing, then don't do it. You can, it's your art. You can do whatever you like. You know what you might say? You know what, that's just too vibrant for me. I just don't want to have it that contrasty. So I'm, re I'm removing my son. <laughs> bye bye son. And as you can see, it's a little tiny white dot now, which the liquid latex would have done the same thing had it not rotted on me. But uh, now can you see why I said I wish I had gone a little bit bigger with that sun? You can't really see it. And I might have gone a little bit more opaque with the yellows to make that sun pop a little bit more now this part is a little scary if you are looking at this and freaking out a bit then step away grab a scratch paper and I'll walk you through this it is not as bad as it looks I am drawing black lines across my pretty painting what happened I will walk you through this so I'm, I'm drawing the foxtails which is going to frame the bottom edges of my painting and this is the way to do it you take your paintbrush and you want to take a paintbrush I'm using a mop brush I you want to make sure it has a really clean tip to it and what, when I mean clean meaning like it really does come to a nice point um the older the paint older paint brushes um, that have been mistreated by somebody like myself won't have those tips anymore So maybe a newer paintbrush if you get what I'm saying it just comes to a nice point You have to make sure your brush is wet and you have to make sure that it is holding quite a bit of color That is the trick to making sure this is done, right? And then what you're gonna do is you are going to hold your brush and you're literally just going to wisp it across the paper kind of like I'm doing here where just the tip of your brush just glides very quickly across the paper and you are gonna have very minimal control over it and that's a good thing um, you just kind of want to use your wrist and your hand to guide it and not your fingers and this is where people go wrong so I'll repeat this part do not draw with your fingers like don't move your hand keep your wrist perfectly still and that's how you get a straight line. Um, a lot of people tend to want to move their wrist to draw these lines and that's where you get messed up. So practice, take a sheet of paper, take your brush. You don't want to have to have paint on it. You just want to really practice that motion 
and just draw across the paper and make your whole forearm and your hand the whole thing move together it's just your wrist and your hand should not move separately from your forearm and your wrist it should all be one almost like you want to tape a ruler to your hand so it keeps it straight that's how perfectly still you want it to be that's the trick um and your paint has to be very you have to have a nice paint on your brush otherwise it's just going to spread really weird uh, so you just want a really wet paintbrush with paint uh, so the more paint, the more liquidy the paintbrush, the better. And you need to paint the canvas to be completely dry. So I'm doing basically the outer edges, the wispy parts of the, the foxtails, um, like the blades of grass, which by the way, I hate these things. They stick to you. The grass feels really weird, but they're beautiful in a painting. So, you know, isn't that how it is? Like the most beautiful plants tend to be the most toxic ones isn't it maybe not i don't know maybe i'm thinking of something else um but you know these are it's just i think they're beautiful with this backdrop so now i've taken my big boy brush again the big one i was using for the sunset earlier and i'm filling in the base with black and uh what i'm going to do is i'm just filling the base and i'm going to actually add some more wisps with the tip of this brush, which it might be a little bit scary because this is a big boy brush. I mean, this is, you know, you really gotta be okay with getting the tips of this brush. And now I'm going to do the bottom grass part. And as you can see, I'm going all in kind of one direction. And this brush holds a lot of paint. So when I go to clean this brush, I literally have to change out my water um, because it holds so much paint and you have to keep adding to it. So I'm just kind of going I'm, I went all in one direction at one point and now I'm going in the other direction because grass does not grow in the same direction. You know when we were kids we used to draw like our house and grass and stuff. The house was always like one dimensional and the grass was always like straight up and perfectly like even space. And it's just not that way. So as you can see I have the long wisps on the left hand corner. I have some in the middle. It looks like a little bunch of weeds and then a little bit to the right. Obviously you could tell that there's a little bit of a breeze so they're they're kind of flow into the right uh not completely because that would be a little extreme so now i'm taking my really tiny tiny detail brush and this one's a princeton um it's a round brush and this isn't a size their sizes are so weird when they get to the small ones three over zero there's probably a proper way to say that and i did not say it right but it says three over zero three slash zero and I'm adding little tiny hairs. This is the foxtails. Uh, I didn't mean for that one to go over the sun like that. I didn't really want to go out that far. I remember when I said you don't have too much control over this. Uh, but it did. And I went with it. Not like I can lift that little branch off. Uh, and then it just you don't want to go overboard with this because it looks more natural when it's just a few. So I just added some to my thicker. So if you had a couple of grass blades that maybe look a little too thick for what you wanted, those are probably the ones to add to the foxtail, the little, uh, the little bristle ends to. Uh, so that's exactly what I did. There was a couple there that were a little bit thicker than I was comfortable with. Those are the ones that got the, the little, the little arrowhead shaped. I don't know. What's the foxtail? Is that the actual blade of grass or is that the actual? little feathery thing there I think it can be referred to both so I just added a few five and that's it on that left hand side uh, it looks a little messy now because I still have the the tape on the edge once I lift that tape that's my favorite part of the painting then it's gonna make a little bit more sense so this is the next part that we're gonna be doing uh, this is what I was talking about I take my bleed proof white and I add some color to it and a lot of people are like, what are you doing? I break rules. I don't like rules when it comes to art. I want people to just do what they feel comfortable to get the piece that they want. So I'm taking my bleed proof white, which has probably gotten a little bit too thick over time. Uh, I, my bleed proof white, I never empty the bottle. Uh, it tends to dry out before I get to using the whole thing. One jar goes a long way. And I, I like to use them for, uh, for things like like little reflections on the water which is what we're going to do so 
I added it to that gamboge yellow from earlier. So, and added some water so it's not a thick bleed proof white, it's watered down, but it will still sit on top of the painting. And I'm adding it with another detail brush and I'm just adding some lines with the yellow down the middle uh, as if it's a sun reflecting onto the water and uh, I'm doing a mix of if when you see me kind of dabbing on the right there uh, it's when I'm just using pure white and then when I mix it on the left I'm adding a little bit of yellow so I'm doing both white and yellow and I'm adding it to so you can see the reflections from the sun I'm not overkilling this one I've done I've done that where it's really like tons of reflection and it turns out beautifully and then sometimes I think subtle goes a lot further and I'm, doing, I'm going for subtle here so just a little bit of the white and a little bit of the gamboge mixed with the bleed proof white to add a little bit of the highlights and then I'm gonna do that also watered down, but just enough where it's easily applied. Uh, and then I'm gonna do a little bit to the foxtails as well. Is it a foxtail? Like, have I been calling it the wrong thing this whole time? Do you ever say something so much and then you're like, I don't even know if I'm saying that right. Uh, foxtail. I think it's a fox. Yeah, that's right. Um, so I added a little bit more yellow just by itself on top of that white, just to give it a little bit more color. And then I'm going to add the white, a little bit of watered down blue proof white to the foxtail, so the blades of grass. And I'm not sure necessarily if I'm going for it to be the reflection of the sun or more so that I'm going for it to be more depth for the blades of grass. It ends up being a little bit of both. Uh, oh, and I'm adding it to the mountain ridge uh, just because I want it to look like the sun's reflecting a bit off the mountain there. I don't know if that would actually happen. I don't know if you would see that in real life, but you know, it's a painting and I think it just makes it look kind of more dimensional. Just a little bit in the middle there, um, a little bit more white. And then to the, uh, the grass and I, it does make it pop really nice. Uh, less is more for sure when it comes to this I would definitely stop before you think you're done and if you think that it needs more just walk away from it for a little bit and then come back because uh, you don't want to overdo the bleed proof white at least in my opinion so I'm adding a little bit to the grass it just makes it really come come together I think I love this little added detail bleed proof white white is one of my little favorite tricks in my magic trick of art my art trick of box <laughs> what the heck? my magic trick of art box I don't know what it's called my my magic box of art tricks there we go my goodness remember how I said earlier I was a writer <laughs> like, yeah right you cannot put words together to form a sentence uh, but see how pretty it is to come together the little white little, little white wisps white wisps That's not easy to say uh, I just, It just I don't know. I think that really pulled it all together and of course My favorite part at the very end is pulling the tape off Look at that dun, dun, dun. Thanks so much for joining me on this I hope that you enjoyed this and if you guys did give this a try please tag me with your version on Instagram I would love to see it and see what you came up with uh, and hope you enjoyed it don't forget to hit like and subscribe mm -hmm.